One of the big ideas of this course has been that all models can be trained in exactly the same way by maximum likelihood estimation. We write out the likelihood of seeing the observed data set as a function of the unknown parameters, call them theta, and we just pick theta to maximize this likelihood. It's a remarkably simple idea, and it's also remarkably powerful. It's the training method behind everything from linear regression to generative adversarial networks. In this video, we're going to see how it applies to Markov models. Here's a nice simple Markov model. Have a quick read. When a question says time series and doesn't give any more details, it just means that x0 up to xn are floating point numbers, and that subscript, let's call it i, counts time steps. So, how do we actually do the fit? How do we find an expression for the likelihood of the entire data set? Let's start with a general calculation that applies to any random process, not just to Markov chains. The likelihood of the entire data set, xn down to x0, can be broken into pieces using conditional probability. This is the definition of conditional probability, and here's how we'll use it. We'll take b to be the entire sequence xn minus 1 down to x0. And it gives us this expression here, one factor involving xn, the other factor only involving earlier time points in the data set. And now I'll do the same trick on the second factor to break it down some more. And we can keep doing this. And in the end, we get a full decomposition, one factor per data point. Now, this probably looks like an unhelpful mess, but if we limit ourselves to Markov chains, which have the famous memoryless property, then everything simplifies. Inside each of these factors, we don't need to include all the past terms. All that matters is the most recent state, which means that the likelihood of the data set is the product of one-step likelihoods, the likelihood of an item in the data set given just the preceding item. This is the sort of likelihood function that is easy to work with. Let's go back to our example from the beginning of the video, and let's write out the full likelihood of the data set. We can estimate the unknown parameters a, b, and sigma by picking them to maximize the likelihood, and we just worked out the form of the likelihood. Now, writing it out this way highlights something a bit weird. The total likelihood involves two factors, one for the initial state x0 and the other for all the subsequent states. How are we meant to maximize the first term? Well, the question doesn't actually tell us anything about the distribution of the initial state x0. So it's reasonable, I think, for us to assume that the distribution of x0 does not involve those unknown parameters, else the question would have told us. So the parameters we want to estimate only come into the second part of the expression, the big product, so that's all we need to maximize over. Now, the question tells us explicitly what these likelihoods are. It tells us exactly the distribution of xi given xi minus 1. So we can just write out those likelihoods and maximize the whole thing. We've done this sort of maximization many, many times already. The big thing to spot is that the maximization we want to do here is exactly what we do in the standard supervised learning setup. We're treating xi as the response variable and xi minus 1 as the predictor. For this particular question, the response is a continuous random variable, so this type of fit is called a regression. And so fitting a Markov chain like this is called autoregression, since it's basically a regression of the time series x against itself. Anyway, the point to take away from all of this is that fitting a random process is exactly like any other sort of fit. We just write out the log likelihood of the entire data set and we maximize it. The only difference between random processes and the simple probability model from the first part of the course is that here the data points aren't independent. But as long as we know how to write out the likelihood function, who cares? 